talking to you too. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Hi. Hold on. Are we live? Yes, we are live. We should be live. <laughs> We are live. The minute you see a little button, we are live. So this yep, is going to be a really, really interesting <laughs> evening because, well, life life has a way of just dictating what we can do and when we can do it. <laughs> but thank you so much, everyone who is in Facebook land. This is Karen Rower. Yay! Hi, everyone. <laughs> and if you haven't had a chance to meet her yet, here she is. You get a chance to meet her all the way from Australia. So thank you so much. And I'm here in New Hampshire. So we're, we're just, you know, I don't know if we could be any more miles away from each other. I know. Very true. Very true. And especially with the way of the world at the moment that we can't get on an airplane and visit even. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and, and really, would we want to if we could? <laughs> Not at I the mean, moment, no, no. Hopefully no. by the end of next year, that would be lovely though. I oh, do def miss definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if you come, you know, like I know you go to Las Vegas a lot, right? Yes, yeah, so yeah. I'm... I can meet you halfway. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately not next year because they're still going to have our borders closed. But mm -hmm. I'm really hoping for um, Oklahoma in October next year. Um, it oh. sounds like our borders will be open then. So... Fingers crossed, it'll be great. That's, that's even closer. So that's even better for me anyways. <laughs> but, wonderful. Um, nah. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who is joining in. Sorry, we're late. Hope you can find us okay. And if not, hope you find the replay and thank you for watching that as well. Um, I will I will start off with questions and they'll be really easy and, and maybe I'll remember them all and maybe I won't. So. <laughs> Cause I don't have my cheat sheet in front of me. So first, first off, Karen, please tell us where you're from. I'm from um, Australia, of course. And I live on a coastal town. I live in Mornington in Victoria. So where I'm um, actually tired by living on the Mornington Peninsula. So yeah, we live in a really pretty spot. It's yeah, really nice. <laughs> and how far are you yeah. away from the big cities? Um, so from Melbourne, we're probably about an hour and 15, maybe an hour and a half. So, and that's probably, you know, the big city. That's where our airport is and everything like that. So okay. far enough that, away. Yep. That gives us a good, you know, gives me a good way to, you know, I know like I'm an hour away from Boston. Yes. So that kind of, that kind of gives me a good gauge to know where, where you are. So do you have, I mean, is your city, do you have craft stores and everything there or do you have to go? No, so I live in a semi-rural little town, so we don't have any craft shops or anything. And a lot of the little craft shops now have closed down. So, and we're in lockdown again. So Victoria, where I live, we've been in lockdown since, um, let's just say May last year, we've been in lockdown over 220 days. So can you imagine living like that? At the moment, we're in lockdown and we can't go more than five kilometres, so about two and a half miles from our homes. We can't have visitors. We No shops are open, only supermarkets and that. So, And we've been like that now for probably six weeks. And they're so, saying we'll be like it till the end of September. So... So if you run out of uh, out of stuff, do you can you mail order and have it shipped in? Yep. So we can get groceries and um, chemist items and things like that. Mm -hmm. We can still go. The shops are there, still open, but like big malls and everything, everything like that's shut. So like our Spotlight, which is like a Michaels, is yeah. closed as well. But they all do click and collect, so you can do okay. that. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, that saves you, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a quiet time. Yeah. But so, so the next done. <laughs> the next difficult question is: Do you come from an artistic family? No, I don't. Not at all. So, no, no one arty but me. <laughs> so when did so, you when did you discover that you were artsy? 
my mum would tell you from the time I was little, she always thinks that I should have invented Zantangle or something because I used to draw all the time. And even oh. in my teenage years when I was on the phone, we used to have phone books back then, and I used to doodle in all the phone books and do drawings and do everything like that. But, yeah, in prep, so when I was five, um, mm -hmm. I had a really lovely prep teacher and she entered one of my paintings into the local art show and I won it. I actually remember her coming, picking me up in a taxi and taking me to the art show and um, I won first prize. And back then it was like a pack of 12 Derwents, which was Derwent coloured pencils, which would have been really expensive. But the girl who got second got one of those little snow globes and I cried and cried because I wanted the snow globe. I you wanted this. I could understand that, though. I could understand that. <laughs> I was, yeah. So, and Mum still has the. I still have the painting, and I still have the newspaper clipping. Mum kept all that. So. So was what was cute. the, what was the subject? What was the painting of? Um, Peter and Candy. I think they were two characters in a book, and I drew them. I painted them actually, and yeah, I should have probably. I don't know where it is. It'll be in a safe spot. Um, but, yeah, I, and I painted them as boy, a boy and a girl. So they were quite realistic, actually, for a five-year-old. But, yeah, so that's what I did. And then I always um, painted and drew and everything. And like you said, life does things. And um, it was when I was – my younger son was three and he was a bit of a live wire and knocked out his front teeth at three-year-old kinder and did a few things. And I happened to be – walking by a lady doing folk arty Christmas ornaments and I um, joined in. I thought I need to start to do something and I used to always paint tops for the kids and do different bits and pieces and yeah then I started doing some classes with her and then was lucky enough that she actually put me in um, contact with the society here and I got to meet Cheryl Bradshaw I don't know if you remember yeah. her she's a bear she has books out called she's a bear I did classes okay. with her. Um, Lee Davis here and I was really lucky enough to do classes with like Jan Shaw oh Tracy Sims like some of our really top-notch so so, so after so after high school that's when you when you started getting involved with the society or was it Probably in my in my mid twenties, yeah. Okay. So not not after after I had kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that seems to be the the time when the when the people painters realize they have to have a hobby to yeah. keep them sane. <laughs> Absolutely, that's exactly it. Was exactly right, exactly right. And then I've probably been doing classes for a year, and the craft shop we did have a craft shop here um, in Somerville, and they asked me to do classes, and you know it. it just snowballed from then and you know one year I went to America and um, submitted for an SDP convention and couldn't believe it that I got picked so I, th I start like probably what I'm known for is doing techniques with mother of pearl you know and using yes. mother of pearl so yeah. Yeah. so when you first started teaching were you teaching other people's designs or did you go right into designing yourself no, at, at the beginning, probably other people's designs. Yeah, okay. people would when come to me. So in class, you know, you could have eight people and the eight of them were all painting totally different things, what they wanted to mm -hmm. paint. And, yeah, it was probably about 2000 and maybe four or five that okay. they started, you know, doing my stuff. But, yeah. So, so what kind of designs did you start creating? What, like, do you have a favorite subject matter that, that you like to design? Um, at the beginning, I probably did lots of flowers, lots of flowers with Mother of Pearl and different things like that. Then um, I started doing jewelry and, you know, I did the domino necklaces and I still do them. They were really, really popular. Then probably, oh, oh geez, maybe even seven, six or seven years ago, my husband got a wood laser machine. And um, thanks to advice from Jamie and Don, of course, and he now he does all my designs. So it's really it's like taking my design into a new level, um, having the wood laser machine because I'm lucky enough that he he does all the stuff for me. So 
Excellent. I come up with something and can you do this? And yeah, he puts together. So I'm really loving that at the moment. So at the moment, I'm probably doing more stuff you know, that's, mm -hmm. diff that's, that's, that's a bit different. With laser. Right. I'm probably doing, I don't want to say cutesy. I love doing everything, Cindy. That's the thing. I don't really, I love flowers. I love Jostavo. I love Christmas. I love, I love animals. I love anything, you know. So yeah. there you go. So you're a yep. man of a, a woman about town there. You can do it yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing awesome. it all. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have um do you have a, a, a certain technique or other than the mother of pearl, which you became known for, do you have a technique as to how to apply um paint a, a, a favorite one that you like to use I often? Think if, if my friend Linda's watching this, she'll have a fit because she, um, I, I always say I do messy floats. So I always um, may put something into a middle value and then I wash in and float in shadows. And then I have a, I like to use the Dynasty 200. It's like a little dome brush, swooshing brush. And then I'll mm -hmm. dry brush in a lot of the highlights and everything using that brush. So I tend to layer I, sometimes I think I use acrylics a bit like a watercolour, but differently as well, because I like to do lots of washes, lots and lots of layers. Anyone that the girls that are painted with will say, yep, yeah, um, she does lay, lots of layers. So that's the, probably the queen of layers. <laughs> it is definitely. Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> oh, cool. That's awesome. Uh, do you have a favourite brush or, you know, like yeah. a... Yep, that Dynasty, the Dynasty 200, which is like a smooshing here. Just give me two seconds. So smooshy, a smooshy, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Hang on, I'll hold it up. Oh, okay. So it's, it's like that dome bit in the end so that I can come and really dry brush bits in. That's my favourite brush. I get the smooshy now. I get it. Yep. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So swish it down. Because I'm like, yeah. smooshy with a flat, not so much. Smooshy with a <laughs> no, hand, no. not so much. But that definitely. one definitely smooshy. Definitely Absol smooshy. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um I was gonna say, do you have a do you have a um a particular tip that you would uh bestow upon somebody new coming in the industry? Ooh, um, I would say relax and enjoy it. I think when new people start painting, and even I was the same, I wanted it so much to look like the teachers, you know, and be perfect, be exactly like that. Whereas I had advice once to actually, a teacher said to me, why do you want it to look like mine? And I said, oh, because it's so beautiful. And she said, but you shouldn't want it to look like anybody else's but your own. And honestly, once I started to do that, I actually found I painted better. I was enjoying my painting instead of really stressing over it. And a mistake is never a mistake. You know, it can get fixed. It sometimes the the best mis the you know the best mistakes are the ones that you don't do, but you look at it and you go, "Wow, hang on, that looks really good," and you didn't mean to do it. So I don't know. I would just say relax and enjoy it because that's why we do it like what you said Cindy before we're doing it to take some of the stress of the world away from us mm -hmm. yeah you know, so, so you know we don't want to make it stressful it doesn't need to be um, yeah. but yeah that, that's how I feel and yeah you know, well, I, I agree we, we agreed on that one <laughs> yeah yeah it is. We. It's probably the thing that I see in class a lot too. You know, is this the, what people and and wanting to paint perfect. Whereas, what's a perfect flower? What's a perfect right. leaf? I wanted right. to do a study once on leaves, and I was going to throw in the crinkled leaves, and but then people might go, oh, that leaf looks half dead, and that. But leaves do have bug bits bitten out of them, and they're not these perfect looking, you know, leaves all the time. So right, you know. right. Right. Yeah. This I, I have a, a mentor a friend and she yeah. always has has to have an ugly. It has yes. to be in somewhere in the painting has to be an ugly spot. Yep. You know? Yep. 
Yep, Whether it's I a bug bite or, or something, but yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, absolutely. So, what, I agree. Um, so how did you, because you're going to be doing a Zustava piece for our full webinar. So how did you get into the Zustava um, realm? So I was really lucky that we had um, Jan Shaw lived in New South Wales and she was one of my mentors. I mean, I just adored, adored her. And um, she was actually doing a Jostavo tray on with Mother of Pearl. Let me go get oh, it for one minute. Oh, yeah, sure. So if you are asking questions on the live in Facebook, I apologize for the questions. Hold on, Karen. I apologize. Yep. I can't ask your questions to Karen for you because I am using my phone because I'm on location uh, with my family. So I don't have access to... The, my laptop, which usually tells me what people are asking you. So please go ahead and continue to ask your questions. And afterwards, Karen will go into the group and she will read your questions and she will answer them via text. So my apologies, uh, but here we are. So show us, Karen. This was the tray that I did um, with Beautiful. Jan. So we did it with the Mother of Pearl. So that was when I first... Um, learnt Mother of Pearl, I suppose, and we did Gold Leaf and we did Just Folk. So then um, I was happened to be walking by a florist when I got home here and they had water lilies and I contacted Jan and said, oh, can I do water lilies in Mother of Pearl? And she said, absolutely. So I guess I did them as artistic, not in a Just Folk style. But then whenever Jan would, would have a seminar or whenever you know, she was at a convention. I always did classes with her and, um, yeah, and that That's sort of thing. So, yeah, I just loved it. I loved painting with her. I loved, I loved the technique of yeah. Jostavo. Well, because um, you're, you're the leather queen, uh, layer, sorry, not leather. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so the that's what... Queen. And just about is all layers. It's just... It is all the layers. This is the piece that we're doing, and it is. It's layers and little layers. So, yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. So definitely yes. you want to sign up for that, people, because uh, this will give you a really awesome introduction to Zostava and also yeah. to Karen, who is a yeah. superb excellent artist and she does come to the u.s so there's no excuse for not taking a class with her when she comes over the the, the other big pond and <laughs> definitely definitely and so, the other um, one go ahead yep and even this piece the hummingbirds again it's layers like on the you can't see all the metallic glistening on the birds but again that's yeah lots of little layers in there and it's a two part that oh you, nice yeah that yeah you can do so you could even make it just hang like that i have a friend who just hangs hers like this in her window so it's a nice option that you could do and again lots of yeah layers in those birds but also what's <laughs> nice about um your, the classes is you can get those surfaces here in the U.S. that you don't have to worry about shipping from Australia, no, right? That has been so wonderful that um, Doug and Kyle um, from Pinecraft Inc. have, um, yeah, are, are cutting all my woodwork and doing everything, which has just, just made it wonderful. I really don't think I could do what I do if I didn't have them in the U.S. helping me and being there and... Yeah, it's it's been amazing. Been it certainly amazing makes life them. a lot a lot easier. Definitely, oh, definitely. Absolutely. And your pattern packets are available there too, are they not? Not at the moment. At the moment, they're available on my Etsy um, store. So it's Karen Brower Designs is my Etsy store, and I am working on a website, hoping to be up and running by Oklahoma. Um, but at the moment, my poor computer man. And I can't get together because we're not, oh. <laughs> you can't have visit. Yeah. So once we open up a little bit, I'll be able to get with him and hopefully get that up and running too. So. Oh, yeah, good. Really awesome. So is there, is there a technique or a, a medium or a style or something that you haven't done yet that you would like to try someday? Um, 
I don't know. I do everything sort of. Well, I don't. Well, that doesn't sound right, does it? Um, I've done watercolors. <laughs> I've done pastels. Um, I do oil. water mixable oils. Um, okay. I don't. I don't do oils because of the fumes. They they really give me a migraine. Um, yeah, I, I I dabble with color pencil. I I do multimedia, bit of everything. I like giving everything to go, whether I do it the right way. Sometimes I think I just do it the Karen way. And I had a lady say to me once, I was doing some liner work um, on some mother of pearl, and she actually in the class said, you can't load a liner like that. And I said, why? And she said, because you're not allowed to load a liner like that. And I said, well, you know, I'm Australian, so we like to break the, the rules, I suppose, and this is how I load a liner. And <laughs> proceeded to paint my piece loading my liner like that it was quite funny but you know it's, you, yeah the, I don't the know. bottom line is as long as you're happy with your results how does it matter how you get there yeah and look I was trying to show a different technique actually it was sometimes um especially when I'm doing the texture paste too like on the hummingbirds we actually texture them first with a little bit of texture okay. paste and everything and um it's a bit like cake decorating. So, and sometimes when I load up my liner, I load it up thickly and in a way okay. I lay it like I'm cake decorating. It's, you know, I suppose it's just, and I love to offer different techniques to people when they come to a class, you know, I don't want them to do the same thing every time they paint with me. I want them right. to do something different every time they paint with me. So, yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting to <laughs> know that you can go to a Karen class and you're going to learn something new every time hopefully that's, hopefully hopefully yes that's exciting <laughs> i can't wait i can't wait to have you uh teach a class for our for webinars it's going to be fantastic i know that's so I wonderful so, i'm very um, excited thank you for the opportunity so much it's so exciting <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> And I'm so glad to have finally met you. And I love, you know, the interview here and, and getting to learn more about you and your styles of painting and what you like, what you don't like, things like that. And I think that that helps people to even make a better decision as to whether or not they want to join a classroom and which, by the way, you all do, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, just and for the accent alone, isn't it? <laughs> just for the accent alone, definitely. <laughs> no, but but um, that but the learning part is going to be fantastic, and I love the variety that you offer the students. Now you also have tutorials, right? You have video tutorials that you offer as well, right? Yep. So on um, Facebook, I have a page, Karen Brower Pearly Designs, it's called, and yeah, I'm doing free. Um, tutorials so there's lots of um, at the moment the one that I'm starting tomorrow so tomorrow at seven o'clock your time I think it's four o'clock pacific time um, we start the, yeah. little, the little red oh, owl so I'm cute. doing a series every week on the little owls so there's little owls that have been done a little barn owl oh they're adorable <laughs> a little and then I just started a YouTube channel that's Karen Brower Designs, and this is the Snow Owl. And oh, after I teach this on Facebook, on YouTube, I'll be demoing a video of these little face on a little bauble. So each little one will have a little bauble face. Oh, neat. Done, yeah, that will be done on YouTube. And they're all free. Um, the pattern is on my Etsy store um, if you wanted to purchase it, but it's not necessary. You know, it's up to you. And but they I'm can also get the wood? Doing, yep, the wood's all from Doug, all from me here in Australia. Uh, but Doug has all the wood. And the other one that I've got free videos on now, so if people go into my videos, they'll get the free videos and there's free patterns for all the little dominoes that I've done, like I've done... Um, Halloween dominoes and Valentine oh, ones and oh, little Christmas ones and they're all free 
mm-hmm. on my on my page at the moment, like this Thanksgiving. Oh, paintbrush. On, on you're saying on your page, on your Facebook page? On my page, yes. Yep. Okay. So the patterns are on the page as well and the videos are on the page. So anyone so, can go to Kara Brower Designs and download them and watch it. So after this, you can go into the Facebook and under um, our conversation, you can type in all the links to where they can oh. go to gather their gather all that information because yeah you don't want to miss out on this one (laughs) oh thank you thank you no i love those owls i love those owls it's going to be exciting this is the yeah he's a nice easy one to start with i think and then my husband cut them out so i have to talk to doug about these as little earrings oh my goodness gracious (laughs) oh my goodness they're adorable Well, so my battery's can... dying, so I hate to say, but we're going to have okay. to sign off. And so thank, thank you. Thank you, Karen, for being here and, and putting up with this craziness. Thank no, you thank so you much. thank you so much. And, and you. everyone, thank you for, for spending this time with Karen and learning more about her. And please, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and she will come back and she will answer them. And I'll also go back and look at them later today. So um, don't hesitate to to ask her questions and uh, check out all the links that she's going to put in there so that you can go and see all what she's been up to and what she's capable of, because it just is, it's just a wonderful, wonderful. So thank you so much, Karen, and have a wonderful rest of your evening or day. Day here. Yep. It's eight. What is it? Just after 830 in the morning. (laughs) So have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm going to go and enjoy my family for the rest of the evening yes, and you don't um, do everybody that. everybody remember to always paint with heart good night thank you all <laughs> thank you so much bye <laughs>